when I first broke my neck, I thought all hope was gone. But then I soon realised that life rolls on. So hi there, welcome to my podcast. Uh, my name's Trev and my motto is life rolls on. I'm a C4 tetraplegic from a accident 20 years ago where I fell and broke my neck. Uh, I'm talking to Liam, who's a quadruple amputee, who's a motivational speaker and a, I believe you're a writer as well. No, not yet. <laughs> oh yeah, work, working up to that. So we're gonna we're gonna have we're gonna have a chat about our lives, our injuries, our recoveries, and our attitudes, and um, see where it goes really. So I'm actually looking forward to this. I've seen seen a lot of your stuff on LinkedIn. That's how how I got to hear about you and uh, what you're what you're doing and how you're doing it, which is absolutely fantastic. And myself, I'm trying to get into the motivational speaking and telling my story of disability awareness. So I think this is going to be interesting. So can you tell me a little bit about yourself? I know you're a quadruple amputee. What does that mean? It means that I, well, I'll take it back to the start. I fell ill the day before my second birthday with uh, meningococcal septicemia. Right. Basically a hybrid of meningitis and septus. And in order to save my life, this wasn't guaranteed to work, but there weren't many other options. They amputated both hands and both feet. So my left arm was amputated of the elbow, my right arm was amputated through the elbow and both legs below the knee. So that was around about the time of my second birthday. So this is all I've really known, to be honest. Right, crikey. I mean, mine, mine was from an injury, so I've had... 25 years of being, I use the term, able-bodied, um, whether that's PC or not, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, I mean, that's that's mad that at such a young age, so that was your parents' decision to do that, obviously? Yeah, yeah, it was between my family and the doctors. And t- to be honest, there, there were no other options. It was either, it was a, quite literally a matter of life and death, so... If they didn't do it, I would be gone anyway. So they, they they took the risk, and thankfully it worked. Well, absolutely, yeah. You're still here to tell the tale, so that's that's the main thing. I'm um, intrigued and interested to find out a bit about your life. So, what was it like growing up then? Growing up was a, to be honest, I can't say it's a strange experience because I've <laughs> I've never experienced any other life as opposed to right. That. So it it was a it was an interesting experience. So I. Uh, understood from a young age that in order to find out what I was truly capable of, I would have to continually push my, my own boundaries, my own limits. And I, d- I didn't really take no for an answer, so <laughs> <laughs> right. but through my childhood I learned to do pretty much everything or all the main things my, myself, just by holding my two arms together. So I can see there, yeah, yeah, your arms, yeah. Yeah, so I was uh, I was I was quite motivated from day one. It's uh, I never really seen myself as being that different, you know. I, I was accepted into like a mainstream school, and I, I, all the children around me they treated me as normal as I be expected to be treated. In truth, so um, yeah, everything was fine and dandy until I became a teenager. Right, I started to doubt myself and I, I, I had a lot of negative views on myself and my disability. I, I didn't believe I could really be accepted into normality even though there was nothing to suggest this beyond my own mind. I kind of brought myself down inside. So yeah, me, psychologically I, I, I didn't enjoy being a teenager. Do you think you was kind of a bit more aware? Yeah, it was, I suppose as a child we're quite naive and ignorant, <laughs> which works to our benefit quite often. And uh, yeah, as, as a teenager I became more aware of who I was and what I was. And uh, to be honest, it's you'd expect as a teenager you'd get a lot of sort of backlash of other teenagers, but that wasn't really the case, to be honest, most most of it happened was in my own head. Sounds fine, yeah. So you're saying, you're saying you went through a bit of a hard time as a teenager growing up? 
yeah, yeah, without a doubt, psychologically being a teenager was quite tough. So uh, yeah, it, it, it took a good few years for me to come out my my shell really, and it was towards the end of school, going towards university. That's when I finally said, look. <laughs> Sometimes in life you don't get to choose your circumstances and you just want to basically go with the flow and do the best you can. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, I got myself to university, dropped out after two years because I uh, I fell behind the workload due to an injury on my, my real leg. And uh, this basically, because I fell behind and because I work at a slightly slower pace, at the gap that I fell behind by gradually increased as time passed to the point that I could no longer keep up. This kind of got on top of me mentally, just like when I was a teenager. So yeah, I ended up dropped out. I was unemployed for two years. I hit rock bottom, or as close to what I'd imagine rock bottom to be, before I discovered my new career as a as a speaker. Right. Okay. Um... So what kind of, what snapped then? What made you value yourself and your worth? It was, I could actually, I can pinpoint the exact day. Okay. It was, there's no, I don't know the date, but I know it was a Sunday in September 2018. And uh, I was meant to be looking for jobs, but I ended up distracted watching a video on YouTube about finding purpose. And uh, it was after watching that video I realised I could use my experiences, both good and bad, to help other people through their toughest times and hopefully yeah. just keep going. And it was from that moment forward that I decided that I wasn't going to take half measures anymore. I was just going to take life on and feel, <laughs> feel steam ahead. Fantastic. I mean, that's, um, that's certainly the attitude to have and... Um... I agree. That's you've got to make the most. Uh, what's up in there? Um, you've got to make the most of the life that you have got. Something's popped up on my screen. I love technology. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do actually love technology because it makes life a lot easier and it makes life a lot more easier to work with uh, and get on with things. How do you? How do you use a computer yourself? I, to be honest. The way my arm's been amputated, there's actually a bone at the bottom. Right, yeah. And <laughs> I have no word of a lie, that one single bone is a lifesaver. I can that, that I just type like that and use the mouse tracker like that. I could fortunately just buy my two arms to hold to held together, I can just about do everything I need to do. Uh, within the house. My my trouble is without that um out beyond the house. So, for example, getting my wallet, just the simple things like getting my wallet out of my pocket, getting to people's houses, like going to a friend, stuff like that. that that's when I rely quite heavily on other people is beyond my front door. Right. Way in the house, I am quite independent. So it's it's quite a contrast between the two lives, to be honest. So that's a, that's a battle I'm still fighting. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can relate. I can, I can relate to that myself because... Um, I need I need twenty four seven care, so I need looking after the washing, dressing, etc. Uh, but once all that's done, I'm actually quite independent in the home, um, and I can use the it's not going to go off uh, the Alexa to help me turn on devices, operate things, change channels, and that has given me so much independence. Whereas outside, uh, I use my power chair, and once I'm in my power chair, I'm I'm out and about. It's um, just as normal you don't really need much assistance so it is it's a complete contrast well back in the day when you could go out <laughs> so how are you finding um the lockdown then here yeah the, the lockdown is uh interesting <laughs> yes <laughs> honestly I, I didn't notice too much of a difference because because my abilities lie primarily within my house I have a tendency to isolate myself anyway. Right. I, I have this hesitation about asking for too much help, which outside of that boost, I, I need help. So psychologically, I, I kind of trap myself in my house a little bit, which, but in truth, in recent months, I've been doing a lot more to combat this. 
However, I am used to from previous years kind of spending a lot of time locked up. So <laughs> it's uh, even from that point of view, though, it, it is starting to get into my head being locked up too much because even beforehand, even though I was primarily within my house, it wasn't to this extreme. <laughs> this is this is unlike anything I've ever done before. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm exactly the same. Um, I spend a lot of time at home anyway, so I'm quite happy to occupy myself reading, listening to music, watching TV. It's a normal for me. But I do like going out and living my life and making the most of it to what I can and especially traveling. But these last few months of having that freedom taken away, you're just like, oh, God, what do you do? Um, I'm thankful I've got a garden, so I've been able to go out on that. But anything other than that, it's just trapped in. Mm. And it's been, psychologically, it's been tough. So I can imagine for a lot of people out there, it has been extremely tough, which is where I think the resilience, certainly for me, has come in. Um, and I've had to kind of, I've had to dig into my inner strength and go, right, you know, what's got me through things in the past? What's going to get me through this? And what am I going to have to look forward to once this all ends? Um, which is, you know, see what happens around the corner. But that's uh, one of my key messages, as I assume is yours, is the actual resilience of going through such a... a lot, I can't even say a lot... Well, I can't say a life-changing, but you was unaware of it at the time so it's a little bit weird one so how um, how would you say to overcome the resilience or build resilience what would be one of your tips a lot of resilience comes from kind of understanding what you can and cannot do about certain circumstances mm. a lot of people lose resilience because they lose faith <laughs> Yeah, yeah. A lot of people are frustrated about certain situations that they can't do anything about. So, for example, I can't do anything about the fact that I am disabled. And particularly in my teenage years, I focused on it and it infuriated me because there was nothing I could do about it. Whereas as soon if you recognise that some situations you can't do anything about, then you can start to adapt to them, work around them and accept them. And it's less likely to drag you down in terms of resilience. But um, if I was to sum it up, the the best way I could put it is sometimes in life, bad stuff happens and you have to deal with it regardless of how you... uh, Like, regardless. So uh, the lockdown is a prime example of a situation that nobody can do anything about. If we spend too much time getting caught up and frustrated about it, it, that's going to take a mental toll on us. It's going to damage the resilience. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 what you've just said then absolutely hits a nail on the head for me. Sometimes you, or we dealt this hand in life, and you have to deal with it. You either, the old saying of you either sink or swim, um, and you have to either make the most of the life that we have got and what we've got, or you just end up. Well, I don't know what I could have ended up at 20 years ago if I'd have decided not to fight and not to try and make the most of this. Without a shadow of a doubt, it scares me a little bit. But <laughs> uh, that's what um, like I say. You can't change it at all. Hmm. So how do you find... Um, I think you've been doing speaking for a couple of years now, haven't you? Yeah, I st- well, nearly. <laughs> I <laughs> made the decision in September 2018 when I watched that video but I, uh, I started up January last year so it's nearly a year and a half and it's uh... <laughs> so to, be honest, to be honest I was quite at the start I thought right I'm a guy with no hands no feet I'm going to ace this <laughs> and then uh, it, it it went okay for the first year and then it slowed down a bit partly due to my own incompetence and laziness so this year I finally pushed myself into trying to get my name out there and just as things were starting to go well this entire pandemic hit so 
I'm still, I'm still doing the, the, the upward journey. <laughs> I'm getting there slowly but surely. But again, this is just another situation that I'm going to have to adapt to. Yeah, I mean, I, I totally agree. I started, I started building a bit of momentum and started getting my name out there a bit by networking and various social events. And then all of a sudden, you, you, you're trapped. So to be able to do an online podcast uh, and actually show that we're adapting and still able to get our message out there is absolutely fantastic. I think because people need to hear different ways of coping and what other people go or go through. Yeah, no, I, I think this is definitely for the, the two of us. I think this is a prime example for <laughs> us or a prime time for us to actually demonstrate what it's like to adapt circumstances and th as, this is a situation as well where we can kind of so for example not the person I speak to can relate to having no hands or no however they can relate to the struggles of a lockdown that both of us have been through so yeah. I can use the examples of my disability how I overcame that and then how I used those mindsets in the context of this lockdown to then uh, adapt to the circumstances and basically teach this to other people and, and inspire them. So uh, in a way, this lockdown could be an opportunity, if anything. So it's a, it just depends on the, the perspective in which you view it. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, I think a lot of positives will come out of this, uh, but it's just making the opportunity and going with the flow a little bit as well to see what opportunities present themselves. But I, I can, it's weird in a way, because uh, I can relate to, I can't relate to not having hands and feet because I've got hands and feet, but they just don't work. So, <laughs> so although I've got the full range, I've got full limbs, um, they don't function. So for me, it's like you were saying about you've got a little bit on your, on your arm, which is a lifesaver, the way my hands are, they're normally very tight, but yeah, I've got one finger that just sticks out naturally. And by using a smartphone, it's just enough to be able to actually get around the screen, hit the digits, and that has enabled me to give me the independence just by a little, I don't know, a little twist of fate, I think. <laughs> I, it's amazing how in sort of tougher situations you start to realise just the little, the little things that actually make a difference in life. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've been very grateful for the fact that it's weird when you, you, you kind of look at your, your gratitude. I've been thankful that, you know, I've got a house above my head. I've got money coming in. I've got people looking after me, and I'm not worried about, like today, the mass ex exodus. So everyone's just gone, oh, right, back to work. And no, we don't have to worry about that, which is strange, but... Uh, make the most of what we've got don't we yeah absolutely it's a just just bending just adapting to a situation that let's be honest nobody could have ever seen this coming it's it's absolute madness like the sheer scale of it as well is what i'm struggling to get my head around it's the yeah, fact absolutely yeah well worldwide it's not just our little town or our country it's everyone it's like one person in China, a family back, and all of a sudden, Scottish football team cancelled. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can imagine. Um, well, when you hear everything, everything's been cancelled. Aye, aye. Well, it's, it's, honestly, it's madness. But it's, uh, again, what what you just got to? Yeah, exactly. Um, ride it out and make the most of it. I'm I'm certainly hoping. I'm hoping that a lot of people will become more aware of how strong they are and actually look through this period and go, you know what, flipping out, that was tough. But God, I learned some lessons. Uh, I learned a lot about myself. I learned, I learned a lot about my friends, my family. And I was able to go and use those attributes of mindset to get on, get on with their own lives and pursue a future, a career or some different job that, people don't want to be in. I don't know. Instead of just going back to a work, someone you don't like. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's giving people time for reflection, just to kind of 
realize what happened. So that then even to my own perspective, the last time I have instead of going back to university, I think to study psychology. Oh, time, right, okay. I was an architect, but now I'm thinking about psychology. And uh, I would never have thought that had it not been for the lockdown and the extra time I had to actually contemplate what it is that I want to do with life. And I'm, I'm not 100% sold on whether I'll go or not yet, but still, the, to have that ability to actually sit back and look at life, that, that ability I never had when I was working full time beforehand on my business and career, it's a, uh, yeah, and hopefully that's the case for a lot of people that they've actually had time to actually sit back and yeah. realize what it is in life that they really care about. Uh, ab- absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's a little bit of a shift in from architecture to psychology. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, I mean, I, I would strongly suggest go for it. I did my degree, I got my degree in 2011 in counseling and humanistic counseling and it was something i never thought i would do in my life after after breaking my neck but to actually roll across stage get my ba and have not only the accreditation but for me it was understanding my journey and figuring out what i'd been through and all these obstacles that i'd come across without without realizing and just kind of plowed forward and then all of a sudden gone Bloody hell, yeah, that was, uh, how did I manage to do this? How did I manage to do that? How did I get involved with coaching? How did I get involved with counselling? How did I do this, that, the other? And it really was a positive step. I've been I've been studying life coaching from doing this and doing a diploma in life coaching and thinking, you know, what, what skills and attributes can I use moving forward? And you think, well, what's everyone going to need? <laughs> a life coach. So use some of these lessons that we're learning hopefully to help others deal with anxiety deal with limiting beliefs um and move forward yeah i reckon if i if i do study psychology it's like i said it's that ability to understand where i've been myself and why I acted in certain ways and what sort of kind of understanding my own story in a, a deeper perspective. Yeah. And I believe that would only help people even further afterwards when I start speaking about things from a, a, a psycho- psychological perspective. I sort of just more than just telling my story, actually tearing it apart and understanding why I acted in certain ways at certain times and the, the consequences of that so yeah that's like I said that's something I'd never thought about before the lockdown so it's uh, it's sometimes it's about finding the opportunities within the obstacles the opportunities within the obstacles yeah yeah I like that that's um, a very powerful saying and that sums up a lot about dealing with dealing with adversity as well because people can't imagine what it's like for myself or for you on a on a day to day basis, you know, when you can physically pick something up, um, and when you can't physically pick something up, and you're having to ask for, you know, your drink and your dinner and all the basic things that you do take for granted, it's a bit hard to get your head around. But once you do, then you learn and grow from it. Mm, without a doubt. Um. So, what kind of things have you done? There's been a challenge. So, like, so for example, what what are the most challenging things that? I've... Yeah, but yeah, rephrase that. So, what's been the most cha- What's been the most challenging thing? Uh, it was sticking to the psychological theme that I've been talking about for the last five minutes is accepting myself and what's happened to me. That was, I don't believe I could move forward in my life especially after dropping out of university and becoming unemployed, I think my biggest obstacle was not being able to accept my own body and what happened to me. Instead of just putting yeah. up and staying resilient and just trying to make the most of life, I would just get caught up in this emotion of what if I had hung, 
in fact, I even occasionally let myself think, what if I had one hand? <laughs> because that would make a massive difference. But it, it, yeah, getting over that barrier of just understanding that this is who I am, just that ability to accept myself and the things about me that will not change. That that was probably the biggest barrier I've ever faced. And I'll be honest, there are still occasional days where I do still struggle. But for the most part, I'm all good going on with it. But it was definitely that was a huge obstacle to overcome. And it was something that terrorized me for nearly ten years. Gorky. But yeah, I mean, I, I can relate to that because I went from being physically fit, physically strong, able-bodied, just to, bam, um, paralyzed, need a wheelchair, need washing, dressing, need caring, and to have everything literally ripped away in an instant. It took me a long time to find self-acceptance um, and find that inner peace to go, actually, you know what, right, yeah, this is who I am, this is what I am. How can I make the most of it? And how can I turn it around? And without doing the, the without doing the counselling study, and I, I don't know, I don't know what would have happened, where I would where I would have ended up. I would like to find think I'd have found my way, but <laughs> it's certainly had its uh, ups and downs, <laughs> as I can imagine yours has. Yeah, yeah, without without a doubt. And it's that. Uh, I think we all have times where we. We look at the past, wish we could turn back time. We we, we think, what if? But that that's that could be an extremely dangerous way of living life. I believe it's if you so desperately focus on something you've not got, you fail to appreciate what it is that you you still do have. So I, I reckon honestly, somebody somebody in a situation such as myself or yourself who believes that they can still do the best they can, They're always looking to improve upon yesterday. I, I reckon somebody in a tight situation with that mindset would be miles ahead of a fully body, able-bodied person who doesn't have that mindset and just takes everything for granted. And yeah, absolutely. Everything's a problem to them. So yeah, I, I, I definitely value the, the, the perspective I have on life more than anything. I mean, that's absolutely fantastic and definitely the right way to look at it. Um, what would be your goal moving forward then? Well, obviously, obviously you've said you've said about doing the psychology, so I guess that's still kind of the main... Maybe. <laughs> I've not decided yet. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, I'm very good for bringing up ideas in my head, getting really excited about them, and then like, three weeks later, I'm like, nah. But we'll, we'll see. This one seems to have momentum behind it. But going forward, if I don't go back to university, I uh, wait, my, my main goal is just to see how many people I can help in a lifetime. So, yeah, it's, I've not got any sort of specific goals of where I'm going in life. I just know that I just want to continually improve upon my message and reach more and more people each year. So yeah. we'll, we'll just see where that goes and hopefully it goes anywhere but backwards. Well, yeah, I mean, sometimes you've got to take a step backwards, you know, in order to move right. forwards. Um, and that's where also where the strength comes from. But yeah, I'm, I'm totally the same. The more, if you, I think if you can help one person uh, change their attitude, their lifestyle, then you can help 10. And if you can help 10, you can help 100, and so on and so forth, so on and so forth. And if you can get to a point where you're having a massive impact on thousands of people, uh, then that's got to be a fantastic contribution. Absolutely. Now, not only that, if perhaps if you, if you positively impact just one or two people to the extent that they then believe that they can positively impact one or two people, then hopefully it, came, it spreads beyond just me and the people I'm speaking to. Perhaps it'll... It, I know this is a really bad analogy, but see how this virus, for example, 
they were saying if you spread it on just to three people, and then they spread it on to three people, it can get out of control. Hopefully, I can do something similar, but with something more positive, like motivation and mindset. Yeah, mm. absolutely. And you pass that message on to three people, they pass it on to three people, they pass it on to three people. That's actually, it's actually a really good analogy, and it does explain. Does explain it really well, and it, it, you, you think by the time it's hit a hundred people that are sharing it, piss off, Siri. I won't it. respond to that. <laughs> you gotta love, you gotta love technology, haven't you? Siri's just having a go at me now. <laughs> Not like being interrupted by Siri. Um, oh, I've completely lost my train of thought now. <laughs> uh, well, about spreading positivity. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if you can get hit to three people and they they in, interact with another three people and spread a positive message to them, then that's that's fantastic, and the message can become further and further afield. Absolutely. So perhaps they used a little bit of a, an insensitive example, but it's, it gets the point across. Of hopefully, it goes beyond just myself. The, 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 the motivation that is not the virus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do you find you pick yourself back up when you hit these low points and you, you're struggling for the motivation? Originally, I, I struggled severely. However, ever since, ever since deciding I was going to become a speaker, I remind myself of my purpose and my value and what, how much I want to help other people. And I remind myself that there may be cases in life where if I don't help somebody, their whole life could fall apart. So it's this kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a responsibility to do good in this world. So yes. if I, I'll, I'll be honest, at the start of this lockdown, I took, I think it was three weeks off, doing no work whatsoever. <laughs> And before it became a habit, I had to remind myself that I, I actually, I owe it to myself and other people to contribute as much as possible. And if anything, people need my help more now than they ever have and at any point in history. So I, that's how I got myself back into uh, working solidly in the last couple of weeks. So yeah, I, I just, I, I think my purpose is and I continually remind myself of it. Fantastic. I mean, that gives me a kick up the backside because I've been, I have been a little bit slack, but then I've also been learning new skills as well. But to actually have a motivation to go, right, let's do a podcast, let's get our messages out there, has given me a bit of a kick up the backside to go, yeah, actually, you know, we need to be adapting to the circumstances and utilising what we've got to get our messages out there. Mm. Gives me a kick up the backside doing this, which is, Great. So even in terms of like my uh, my career and my income, that's <laughs> that's slowed down substantially. But at this moment in time, it's I I can afford to then instead focus on just helping. Me. And the, the, to be honest, it's the, that that's that's my mindset going forward. It's it's, it's how much can I help. Yeah, the main message is, is how, how, how many people you can actually help. Mm. I think that's uh, absolutely commendable instead of saying, start feeling sorry for yourself. Yeah, without a doubt, self-pity is probably one of the most derailing feelings you could have. It's, uh, as soon as you feel sorry for yourself, kind of, it feeds on itself and it just gets out of control. So. I, I need to be careful because I've been there in the past. So I, I need to be careful that that's not a feeling that I ever really allow back into my mind. So, yeah, instead of feeling sorry for myself, I just have to crack on with it. I mean, I like how you say that. It's a feeling that you don't allow yourself to think mm. because we do have control over it. And I'm exactly the same. We have these low moments. You feel you have these doubts and you've got to push them aside and you've got to go, no, get that crap out of your head. And think about the positives, think about what you've been through and turn it around. Um, it can be absolutely devastating and destructive if you just dwell on the negative and 
I certainly don't want to go, go back and find myself going back that way, and I'm sure you don't either. No, not at all. Try to push it out, think about the positives, the good times, and move forward. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just about being lenient enough to give you, if you're feeling sort of negative in, in a tight situation, it's being lenient enough to give yourself time to breathe. Not so lenient that it becomes a habit. So it's, it's, it's that balance between lenient and being strict. It's just kind of finding the finding the, that spot, that perfect spot, and making excuses and feeling sorry for yourself and pushing yourself too hard and unfairly. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And I think a lot of people do do that. Um, any questions you can think of? What have we not covered? At this moment in time, uh, well, we've covered this about the resilience mindset, we're coming off against the future. So I can't think of anything all the hard to fun. <laughs> I like that. I've seen <laughs> no pun intended, but that's a that's a great one. Likewise, I saw your um I think your website, is it uh well yeah, if, anyone does, if anyone does want to get hold of you, uh, where where can, where and how can they get hold of you? Because I yeah. believe it's zero zero limits <laughs> but yeah. with a Z L I M B. It's uh, you can find me online on primarily Facebook, LinkedIn, and Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram under my name William McKelvey, or you could find me under my username or my website, which is Zero Limits, which has got got a B in it, Z E R O I M B I T S. So it's like zero ones, zero limits. I think that's brilliant, and um, it shows. There, there are no limits and it also shows a bit of a a fun side to you and it also shows um a bit about what you're about mm. straight away um do you have a youtube channel as well or <laughs> i'm in the process of developing a youtube channel but um like i said at the start of the lockdown i ended up taking three weeks off right i've, I've not actually got back into organizing the youtube Thing for now, I've been focusing on developing like an online program. So uh, I'm hoping to have a YouTube channel within the next couple of months. Hopefully, <laughs> just whenever I get the plan done, really. But it's uh, yeah, I've got I've got an account there, but it's it's not got anything uploaded to as of yet. But yeah, that's definitely in the pipeline. Okay, you say then um, about developing an online course. Is that something that you're developing? Yeah, yeah, I'm developing like a, it's a three-step program, essentially, I'm going to offer to organisations, businesses and such. Just, it's primarily focused on the lockdown and just encouraging their, primarily their staff to adapt to the difficult circumstances and just basically talking about the, uh, the subjects I've been talking about for the last 40 minutes, just sort of showing them that you know what you you can adapt <laughs> you, you've just got to believe in yourself and push yourself a little bit harder and you, you'll be surprised at what you can do so yeah that, that's my main focus at the moment is helping out organizations that way fantastic and is that um is that available now or is that in development it's in development at the moment it's uh I'll probably be completed of the week. And there's one or two organisations I'm going to test it out with two weeks today. So it says Monday the 11th of May currently. So I'm hoping for the end of the week I'm going to try and roll it out. And knowing my work, as soon as I complete it, the lockdown will end. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, in, a, in a sense, let's hope so. Uh, but the lessons learned throughout this experience, I think, are going to be things that we take with us for a long time. So the lessons learned are always going to be there. I mean, that's fantastic. I look forward to have, actually having a look at that myself and seeing what that's all about. Um, I think that kind of seems like a good natural place to wrap up, would you say? Yeah, that's, that's ideal and... Thank you very much for having me. It's, it's been quite a good experience.
Thank you for doing it. Thank you for giving you giving up your time. It's um, interesting to hear what you've got to say, and I'm really interested, inspired, and motivated by your story. And wow, I just think wow, uh, people need to have a look at my situation, your situation, um, and maybe realise what's holding them back, what's their limits, and how they can change and adapt to live and, I don't know, survive. Yes. Yeah. Live and strive, should I say. I have zero limits. <laughs> have, zero. <laughs> no. <laughs> have zero limits, and like I say, life rolls on. So whatever life throws at us, we keep, keep rolling on and keep, keep persevering with it. Absolutely. So, that, so that's fantastic, Liam. That's fan, thanks for your time. And um, look after yourself and take care. Thank you very much. Okay. Nice one. Cheers.